Hey, um, this is Stacia, and I'm going to share a um, USCF rated tournament game that I played at the Parma Chess Club last night. Um, I had the white pieces against Andrew Gross, rated provisionally at 1790. I think I've had a couple games with him already, and I lost both of them. <laughs> um, so I, you know, <laughs> knew I would have to fight hard this game. So let's go ahead and see what happened. Okay, so I went e4, he played c5, the Sicilian defense, and I went ahead and played d4. So looking for a smith Moore gambit, he took once, he took twice. Okay, and we got this position, and he went knight c6. So I'm down a pawn, but my development is very easy in the smith Moore gambit. So, you know... <laughs> There, rook d1. Okay. And here he went d6. Or wait, I'm sorry, it's my turn. Knight f3, d6. Um, bishop c4. Okay, and I was curious what he would do here because I think last time um, he went for this sort of thing with g6 and bishop g7. But in that game... Um, he did it early, and I took on f7. I'll show what that was. I don't think there was d6, though. There was no d6. He just went g6 here. Yeah, and last time it was like this. And here I can push e5. And if they take, which they probably should, I take, take, check, queen d5. And then they have to, yeah, then I think he went here. This is actually a really interesting game. I mean, white has a slight edge here, but um, it's not winning or anything like that. It's just a game of chess still. So that was our game, and I ended up losing that one, mostly because I got really down on time, but also because I didn't play the position correctly. <laughs> so there's always that. But in this game, after bishop c4, uh, he told me after the game that he was um, he was worried about allowing e5 and thinking about playing e5 or something like that. So he thought about that for a long time here. And then I guess when he decided against it, he just played this move rather quickly. But this move is actually a blunder. If you want to pause your video and find the solution, go ahead and do so now. Well, you know, for a Smith Mora player, this is a pretty obvious mistake. <laughs> um, I knew that he cannot play that because if Bishop takes f7, knight g5, this is like a beginner tactic, really. I mean, he saw it as soon as he played bishop g4. Um, okay, and I think white has a very nice position. Now he can play knight f6. But I just go ahead and bring my queen in. <laughs> and I've actually studied uh, this position before. Because <laughs> I've had it in blitz games and screwed it up. So I actually know more quote-unquote theory from here. But well, let's call it computer lines. Um, so here he went queen d7 trying to trade queens. But now I felt like I can win material because... I go queen f7 check, king here, knight e6 check, and the bishops attack twice. So I can actually just take that, which I did. And then he played queen g4, but even though he could get some counterplay this way, I have the very practical move, queen e6 check. So trading queens, so we did this. Okay, and I feel like we're getting to the starting position of the game. <laughs> um, the king attacks my knight. My knight has to retreat. I went here because I thought maybe that's a good square. And he went g5, and I went knight here. And he went knight to g4. Okay, so what's the scenario here? I mean, you're probably like, Stacia, you're winning. Uh, yeah, you're right. I am winning. But... I'm not, I do not have a history of converting positions well. First of all, um, 
Well, first of all, I usually use a lot of time getting time pressure and then screw it up. And that's one way I could not do this. But the other thing is I never really know how to play in positions like this. So I think this game was really um, a good one for me to like try and figure out how to convert this the easiest way possible. Because, um, you know, we don't have to play flashy chess now. We just have to play practically. The goal here, I think, is to trade pieces if we can. Um, stop his counterplay. Well, and our first goal is just to get coordinated, right? Like, my rooks are in the corner, my king's in the center, my bishop's not developed. Black, on the other hand, is ready to go. So black is going to have an initiative here. So it's up to me to, you know, see his threats, cover them, and develop at the same time, if I can. So here I almost played the move f3, but never play f3. This move is totally fine, but I thought after something like um, here, you know, do I really want to let him uh, play this plan? You know, I'm not sure. I mean, it's probably fine, and it turns out that I could probably, probably just play f4 and let the pawn come up, but this feels like counterplay against my king so I decided against this and I found the top engine move which is just castles <laughs> well like let's just castle why commit pawns why move a pawn right like this knight's not doing anything yet all right so he went rook a to g8 and now I did go ahead and play h3 kicking the knight out and my idea was to play f4 so h3 right here f4 okay so i thought this made a lot of sense um if he takes yes it does open up the rook of my king but i'm gonna get to develop my bishop i'll be on this knight ready to trade it if i want to and um my rooks will be connected and well that seems like progress to me i'm also helping to open up my own rook and he did take here, and I did take with the, the bishop. And so, okay, so I really just need to activate this rook now. But his knights, you know, they're going to get pesky. I mean, I was actually spending a lot of time because there's all these, like, knight moves into the position. And he could always try, like, sacking here. I just have to be, like, kind of aware of what's going on. Um... And if I move my rook away, there's this check. I just have to be careful. That's all. So here he went knight d3. Now that actually is a little bit of a fork. Oops. It's a little bit of a fork because he's forking my pawn and my bishop. My bishop is protected. So I probably could save. I was thinking about saving the pawn. But I mean, why, why play something like this? I don't really see the point. I guess he would take the bishop I don't even think he would take it but um yeah he might just double or something so anyway I didn't save my pawn I'm like hey take my pawn if you want but I want to keep my bishop <laughs> I like that bishop okay so you know if he did this which he didn't I think this is gonna be good for me um he might just go back to d3 I don't know what he should do Let's just say this, and I was going to be more than happy to take that. You know, I think this is not what he wants. He wants to have counterplay on me, not steal pawns. So, um, so he played rook g7. And, okay, I'm a little scared, right? Like, if I, if I just play normal, I think he'll just stack up on my g2 pawn and... It's not so easy to defend. I don't have rook f2. And if I try to defend with my knight, I guess I could do that. I guess. Yeah, maybe that is okay. Let's let's play a nothing move and just see what happens. Okay, he goes here. I probably have to go knight e3. Yeah, I don't think I really saw knight e3 during the game, which is funny. I think I looked at this move. But this would be a blunder, right? I 
I don't know. Computer is saying I'm still better, but... <laughs> okay, I don't want to allow this, though, right? Like, unless I absolutely have to. We don't want to play like that. So, I didn't play A3, though, obviously. Um, so, I... Um, I came up with what I thought was a very practical plan. It's not one of the top engine moves, but I actually like this move a lot. I played Rook to F3. Um, this comes with tempo on the knight, and my idea is to go Rook G3 and try to trade off Rooks. And I thought this is kind of annoying for him, you know, so he played, oh, he went Knight C5, and I just played my idea. Yeah, and the computer does like this. It says, you know, white is still plus seven. I've been plus seven the whole time, by the way, but it's still a game to me because you you can't just play lax, lackadaisically and then, you know, lose material back and lose the game or burn, or burn all your clock time. So he didn't want to trade rooks, which makes sense. See, I think he played that right. Like, he does not want to trade pieces with me. He's down material. He wants to keep pieces on and cause problems for me, keep it complicated. And if he can do that, maybe he'll win on time, maybe I'll blunder. All right, so time for me to bring my last rook in the game. So I did that, and he simply doubled on me. And now I think I could take that if I want, that's fine. But I actually played this move because it forces trades anyway. So he did take, and I took with a rook. And hey, if he wants to trade down, then I think I've made progress. Um, but he played this move. So this move I thought was a mistake, but I think he was just simply playing quickly here. I was getting a little bit low on time, and so he's just playing me on the clock, you know? Um, which makes sense. But this move is kind of terrible. Um, I mean, that's the most passive <laughs> square. I don't think pushing this pawn does anything. There's no pawn break. There's nothing really there. So I thought this is the better move, but okay. Um, so B5. Okay, so I actually came up with a plan. My plan is I want to go rook f7, and I want to take that pawn. But there's a knight defending it. So I wanted to push my pawn with tempo, push it again, get that knight to move, and then play rook f7. So, and I had five minutes at this point, and I think he had something like 15 or something. Okay, so b4. It's the top engine move, so the engine likes my plan. Uh, he went knight e6, pushed. He went... Um, here yeah I actually thought um, he, if he goes here trying to defend this way I probably would take the knight and then play here I like this because um, he can't even defend the pawn because I'll go knight of six check notice the pawn's pinned and then I'm gonna win that that rook so I don't think he can do this can't play that way he would have to just lose that pawn and I think things are going well for me but knight to d8 even though it does defend my threat I mean I think that my last few moves have been very successful um, my plan now is to stop his counter play and to push my weak e pawn if I get that in and trade it off you know, that my position has improved. So that was the idea. Um, and now with the knight and the rook passive, I felt like this was a complete success so far. The only maybe not successful part of it is that I'm low on time. But you guys know how I roll. <laughs> so I went e5 and he went uh, knight to d4, attacking my rook. So I just went Oh, I see. I um when I put this game in here I forgot to add this move in. Okay, that's fine. This is the real move. 
And I don't know if you guys know this pattern, but it's always good to put a rook like diagonal from a knight like this, like exactly this this way, because the knight is now kind of corralled by the rook. You see that? So I play this a lot, this kind of idea. So it makes it hard for the knight to move, basically. All right, so here, um, I forget what he played. I forget what he played. Let me check my uh, score sheet. Sorry about that. Oh, he went h5. Okay. Okay, h5. Yeah. Um, okay, it activates his rook some. I'll say that. But now, um, I took here. And he took with the pawn, because that's... It's illegal to take with a king. <laughs> All right. And what did I do now? Um, I played check. So I'm just doing this by memory now. Pretty sure he came up. Yeah, and I think I just went here. Because I'm attacking that pawn. And I don't really remember. Oh, yeah, he went knight to f5, guarding that pawn. And I went check. He went here. Always repeat. That's what Grandmaster Ben Feingold says. So I repeated. But now here I went. Um, I thought I went here, but that seems risky. Oh, no, I did go here because it's check, and I knew that I wasn't going to get kicked right away. I'm on this again. So pretty sure he went here to guard the pawn. Yeah, I don't think this happened, though, because, I mean, that's a free knight. So I actually don't know what happened from here. <laughs> so I'll just have to explain it. Sorry. Well, I was, I had about one minute left here, so, you know, I just wanted to trade pieces, maybe win a pawn or two. I ended up taking this. I did take that. And he ended up winning this pawn with his knight. And then I won this pawn with my bishop. And I ended up putting my bishop here and pushing up my pawn. And I, I also did manage to trade off pieces. So I ended up, I think I actually sacked my rook for a knight because then I could trade another thing after that. So then he had a rook left. And I did eventually get the fork with on the rook and the king with a knight. And by then, I did have past pawns, so I queened. And he actually played all the way to me, but I had plenty of time to do the, the checkmate. And I managed to win. But, yeah, I mean, even though I won material early in the game, um, you know, this position where... Yeah, I won material, but then... Yeah, it's just like this position is still nerve-wracking. Like, I know I'm winning here, but the fact that I'm so behind in development and the fact that he can just uh, get his rooks active and everything, start creating threats, it's a little tough to face, you know. So, But I'm happy to say I didn't flag and I didn't blunder, and I did manage to grab a point on this one. So hope you enjoy the video, and I will... Um, be back with more chess. Thanks so much. Bye.